Welcome to another edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Aaron Dykes. Today is Monday, April 16th, 2012. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Obama's Secret Service agents punished for carousing with Colombian hookers. But is this just disinfo to keep public opinion away from something more diabolical? Plus, Darren McBreen returns from Roswell, Georgia to file a report on the local Agenda 21 tactics that took a man's life. Then, we speak with Noble Live filmmaker Holland Vanden Neuenhoff and lead investigator of the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee, Dale Phillips, on the upcoming anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombings. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And so it's April 16th. As the tax deadline looms, we have a story on taxes for you. Federal, bureaucrat, government, and taxes are the American dream. Report up on InfoWars by Kurt Nemo. So people have always been angry about taxes and all the more because it goes to fund the unconstitutional private Federal Reserve Bank that charges us for all the money they loan to the government and we pay it back each year in the forms of taxes. And you heard Reagan's report from the 80s, not one stinking dime goes to pay for any of the federal budget or any of it. It's all just to the wrong stuff. But finally, we have a government official willing to put her voice on the line to speak for principles and what the American dream is really all about when it comes to taxes. Here are the words of Secretary of Labor Hilda Solis. I want to tell you that we need to stand up and we must not forget that at this critical moment in time we have to understand what the president is fighting for and the president is fighting right there with you and I and it's about fairness it's about fairness in the workplace it's about fairness in education and it's about fairness in terms of what services are provided by government and if we can't have a say so in that then this isn't the dream that all of us have aspired to be a part of. Because if people aren't paying their taxes, those that can afford it, the billionaires and millionaires, even the folks, as you heard yesterday, that were in the White House, that agreed to pay more. They want to pay more because they know it's their obligation. Because that's what we stand by, those principles. That's very, very important for us to understand what the president is fighting for, for fairness. So there's the fairness and the principles. The president is fighting so they can tack on more government services. You could continue to pay for them, and they're going to pass the Buffett rule to give the illusion of taxing the rich when it's really just squeezing the middle class and, yes, some nouveau riche people. But the real billionaires, the real wealth is all offshore. They're all in foundations. Little clubs are all a part of. None of them pay taxes. you got all the tax cheats in government, but they're coming for your money. That's Agenda 21. That's the clampdown on America and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. There's been all the outrage about killing American citizens overseas through drones, the Anwar al case. That got worse after Obama said, yeah, we got the right to do it, we'll do it when we need to. Then they passed the National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA, putting on paper they can indefinitely detain Americans for whatever reason they want, no due process. Now, this incredible ro report continues to surface as they try to push it through Congress. IRS travel ban revoking citizenship by stealth. So that's up by Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones getting into how there is no requirement that the taxpayer be guilty or even charged with tax evasion, fraud, or criminal offense, only that the citizen is alleged to owe the IRS back taxes of 50000 or more. So yes, you're hearing that now. Travel bans, you won't be allowed to fly out of the country. Your passport will be revoked. You won't be issued a passport if you're accused of owing the IRS money. And it goes on to explain how there is no judicial determination, only an IRS determination, and that is enough to restrict your constitutional rights to freedom of travel and on and on, all without any kind of due process. Don't you see what direction this is going between the assassinations, the indefinite detention, and now this IRS thing, there's just no, no due process. They're just destroying the country and saying they're going to do whatever you want.
want. And so what's going to happen if unconstitutional government health care continues to go through and people refuse to pay those taxes in mass? Maybe a lot of individuals won't be at the $50,000 level, but will we see a greater federal response on that basis too, that now it doesn't need to be 50,000 to deny your passport. Now we'll just deny for anyone who's going against current government policy because they have the right to determine what services you're gonna pay for. That's part of the dream of America is to argue for more and more taxes. And if you don't like it, you don't go anywhere and they might come kill you. Just incredible, uh, probably in different words, Alex has, a report summing up on how really this IRS travel ban amounts to internal checkpoints, greater suspicion in America. It is part of the police state. Here's that report now. My friends, do you know one of the key hallmarks of a hardcore police state, whether it was Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany? Governments would take political dissidents passports away. In the United States, that's only done if you've been charged with espionage or if you're out on bail for a serious crime. The IRS has written a law that's passed the Senate and is now in the House, and Forbes and other publications are reporting on it like it's no big deal. Hey, if the IRS says you owe back taxes, you're not going to be allowed to travel outside the country. They're going to take your passport. How many times have I told you this was coming? This is exactly what the IMF and World Bank, the consortium for the international arm of the private Federal Reserve, have called for for more than 15 years. A global cashless society. Already many jobs, you've got to get TSA approval and authorization to have them. I saw Homeland Security nine years ago on C-SPAN say, you're not going to get on a plane if you haven't paid your taxes. You're not going to get a driver's license. You're not going to be allowed to work. This is total enslavement. This is beyond anything we've seen in history. It is incredibly illegal. Travel is a right, not a privilege. A passport is a right as a citizen. This represents withdrawing and revoking your citizenship. That's what it is under another name. They tried to pass a bill last year for any reason the president wishes outside of a court to take your citizenship away, and then they say they can secretly arrest you or kill you. When he couldn't get that passed, he just signed the NDAA and said he can secretly arrest you or kill you. Well, a law that's unconstitutional is null and void, Marbury versus Madison. What this represents is capital controls. When governments start to collapse throughout history, they always try to clamp down on people leaving the country with money. Bottom line, the IRS is the collection agency for the private Federal Reserve. Pre-1913, dollars that were fiat were backed partially by silver and gold and said United States note on them. After 1913, they said Federal Reserve note. In 63, Kennedy reissued $5 bills that said United States note on them. And he signed an executive order to begin the abolishment of the private Federal Reserve and its collection agency of the IRS. That's why the banksters killed him. My point is, yes, a country has to have taxes, but these aren't taxes. These are levies two private international banks, just as Europe admits they're now under Goldman Sachs dictatorship. Not through money they owe, Goldman Sachs got their governments to sign on to the derivative fraud they created. This is so incredible. And now the banksters are saying, if you don't pay all the taxes we want directly into our private coffers of the Federal Reserve, outside of a court, outside of a conviction, outside of law, we're gonna put you on a no-fly list. Just like Rahm Emanuel, former chief of staff at the White House, said at a gun grabber meeting. He said, look, if you're on a no-fly list, over two million Americans are on that, by the way, you're not gonna be able to buy a gun. That is, if you are on the no-fly list because you are known as maybe a possible terrorist, you cannot buy a handgun in America. One of the things you don't know about is the number of people that we have turned away because their name has been on the watch list uh, or on the no-fly list. Only my mom could, but not me and my dad, because both me and my dad are, are on the watch list. Now they say they want to expand that to where if you haven't paid your taxes, you can't buy a gun. Of course, these are taxes to the IRS, and they just say you haven't paid. 
The bankers are taking control of our lives. They are squeezing Europeans with the exact same system. This is hardcore fascism. This is incredible tyranny, and we've got to defeat this legislation that is now in the House. Get these articles and get them out to everybody and demand that the corporate whore dinosaur media cover this because these are internal checkpoints, internal passports, and they're saying they're gonna revoke your citizenship. That's what this does, extrajudicially. This is off the Richter scale when it comes to despotic, oppressive tyranny. The Federal Reserve is engaged in a total coup d'etat over due process and threatening to revoke our citizenship and pull our passports if we don't fully submit to the bankers. The bankers are pressuring local governments to raise the local property tax that we didn't have till 60 years ago in this country that turns your property uh, into basically a government rental. This is not land of the free, home of the brave anymore. Okay, we're off the charts tyranny. It's time to recognize it, rebuke it, arrest these scumbag New World Order people and take our government back because this is all gonna be selectively enforced. Massive numbers of Congress don't pay taxes. Most of these federal employees don't and they're left alone. Criminal Congress can insider trade and say they're allowed to. Corzine can steal billions, lie to Congress and get caught and not get in trouble. But these crooks run the Federal Reserve and its IRS collection agency, and they're saying they're gonna take anything they want without even a court hearing and take your passport. We've gotta get this information out to everybody. This just proves how tyrannical these scum are. And so we can move on to other corruption in the government, other little scandals going on, although this one's been far splashier and probably less substantial. As you know from all the mainstream reports over the weekend, Obama's trip to Colombia was compromised when Secret Service people were accused of not paying hookers. And then they brought in members of the military and others, and they've detained them and taken them back home, and they're getting ready to charge them with violating the Secret Service codes. That's if we were even told the truth. We really don't know. It's hard to believe uh, that this would have broken out into a major news scandal rather than just being covered up from within. If indeed this is going on, we know high-level officials are engaged of all kinds of unspeakable things. But why is this happening now in the middle of the Summit of the Americas? Is it because there's the Cuba question on the table from a number of Latin American countries uh, calling to open back up negotiations there uh, in terms of the U.S. to do away with the travel? travel bans there to take off sanctions? Does it have to do with the fact that multiple Latin American countries are saying it's time to legalize and decriminalize drugs because the drug war has failed, putting incredible pressure on the U.S. to respond to the obvious failure of the drug war? All the scandals where they've been caught propping up drug cartels, shipping in themselves from Afghanistan and other military-guarded locales? Is it because Wall Street has been caught laundering so much drug money? Does it have to do with all the partnerships and unions and global agreements they're trying to do with these Latin American countries, which are routinely protested and very unpopular with the people? Or does it have to do with the questions raised by Gordon Duff in the Veterans, uh, Veterans Today article, was the presidential detail penetrated by an assassin, Assassination Columbia, what if it ain't about whores? And he gets into how the story seems very unbelievable because of the factors we mentioned, because power tends to corrupt, but it also tends to cover up for its own scandals, not really wishing to reach the media. And so Gordon Duff raises the question, was the Secret Service, was the military, was the president's detail possibly infiltrated by uh, someone from a foreign government or representing some something else? You've got them trying to push for the Iran war, and the U.S. has at least initially said no to that. You've got other factors going on. Was that part of this story? Were they hiding something, and that something is vulnerability, in other words? What's really going on here? We don't know. Was it some kind of honey trap with the women involved here? Was it really an issue of just not paying a woman when they're traveling with all this cash and they're so spendthrifty and willing to just expunge on on all kinds of needless affairs. You've got Secretary of State Hillary Clinton partying in Colombia, all these other officials on camera and in the media doing this stuff. We're gonna keep an eye on this. It appears to be a distraction from the other major issues going on. We, of course, don't know. But you've got even more federal government corruption, the facade of federal justice in this Montana case where Butte, Montana, City Judge Stephen Kombich has been 
uh, accused and convicted now of bribery in federal court. He was sentenced this week to paying only $5,000 in restitution, even less than he was charged with accepting in bribes, a number that was at least $13,000, uh, which came about from routinely dismissing traffic tickets and other citations for bribe. And he's got, I don't know, three or five years of probation. And then in this article from Montana Festo, they compare it to the outrageous case, especially by comparison, where a medical marijuana caregiver named Chris Lindsay is also facing charges. Those charges are more than 690 years or 25 consecutive life sentences for administering medical marijuana in the case there. So why is that case so heavily punished, but government corruption admitted bribery where he's convicted, they just get off with a fine and probation. What in the world is going on? Well, it's just a corrupt system. They go after whoever they can and they let off as many inside officials as they can, unless there's enough pressure to put the skids on them. Anyway, we turn now to what debatably should have been the leading story for the whole day. It's a very important thing because we know they've been looking to clamp down on the internet. Bilderberg, among other elite groups, has met for years with the head of cybersecurity, always looking for a way to control the internet. We know they want to shut it down. We know they want the kill switch. We know they don't want true free speech. And we know they want to kind of corporatize it, mainline it into almost a cable TV style system. And we also know that the past year has been SOPA legislation, PEPA legislation, the ACTA Treaty, all of those have been heavily criticized by a number of prominent people online, some of the biggest companies, in fact, and all the uh, hacker communities, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, all the protest communities, all kinds of tech blogs, and on and on. The internet has clearly been against these treaties, but they're not going to back down. They continue to try to push new legislation, and the newest is CISPA. C-I-S-P-A, and they are now planning to protest this as well as they should. A coalition of advocacy groups has begun a week of intense protests against the latest attack on the free and open internet, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, CISPA. The draconian legislation would force companies to ignore existing privacy laws and share information with the federal government. At the forefront of the coalition's protest efforts is a Twitter takeover whereby users are asked to use these hashtags in an attempt to create the same level of publicity generated at the height of the protests against the Stop Online Piracy Act or SOPA, only they're not planning to black out the internet this time. Maybe they should, or an even bigger stunt to raise awareness of how they're continuing to just try to push through all this draconian internet legislation until people give up. Well, obviously the answer is we can't give up. We know they want to control the internet. They're going to change the names. We just have to keep a pace of it and fight back against it. Just something we're going to keep an eye on. But Alex has again filed a report fresh for today. Here it is hitting the most important issues on the CISPA, the latest aspect of internet takeover. Alex Jones here with an emergency alert dealing with the First Amendment and free speech worldwide. You know that in communist China and in many other countries, they are setting up Internet IDs, Internet taxation systems, Internet blacklist. And Microsoft and other big U.S. companies like Yahoo and others have actually aided and abetted the communist Chinese and other authoritarian countries in setting up these surveillance grids as well as these systems that they use to blockade information or firewalls. Now these companies are also involved here in the United States with the recording industry and others supporting CISPA. Now we were able to shoot down SOPA because of massive grassroots awakening and protest, but the system always comes back again. So we've got to expose CISPA that mainline analysts at CNET News, you name it, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, others call the most draconian anti-freedom legislation they've ever seen. This makes SOPA look tame in comparison. It allows the Pentagon and the federal government to shut down any websites they want. It allows companies to surveil everybody and give the data and share the data and sell the data to the government in live time. It allows the Pentagon to attack people's websites. It is totally and completely anti-American, but it's also just anti-freedom. 
We have an article up at Infowars.com written by Steve Watson that boils down the fact that activists and freedom lovers are launching a new operation against this tyranny. Headline, activists aim to crush Internet censorship bill. Week of protest against CISPA begins. And it's got all the links to the bill, to the Twitter and uh, Facebook revolts that are happening, to all the sites and groups that are taking action. We had the blackout earlier. That worked. Now we're going to use some other tactics. And together we can do this. Do things like shoot your own YouTube video, just speaking out against it. And whether it gets 100 viewers or a million, all of that together, that swarm of activism will expose this tyranny. We have to ask ourselves, why are governments right now openly worldwide trying to sign treaties and pass their own legislation to restrict the web? Because the big mega banks that are looting all of our countries through austerity to pay off their derivatives openly know the people are waking up and realize that we have corporate fascism worldwide setting up what they call a new world order. And so they can't allow a truly free internet to create a Western spring against the globalist. They want to use the internet selectively to start rebellions against countries they want to overthrow. They don't want the people to peacefully use it to expose what they're doing. I saw numbers just last week where record low uh, viewership for TV and cable television, record increase for alternative media online. Look at what we're doing with Infowars.com, the nightly news. Look what countless others are doing with their blogs and news organizations engaging in real research. So there is a threat that the system is desperate to basically quell, the threat of liberty, of true diversity of ideas. The system sees freedom as a threat, and that's why there's a perfect storm of dinosaur corporate whore media that can't compete with free media and government that can't compete with free media coming together to try to sell the end of the free Internet as we know it. If we beat this, they'll come back again. But that's what's fun about this. It's not, oh, gosh, they came back. It's, hey, we beat them. Now they're coming back for another fight. Good. We have to make this the sporting event of our times, fighting for liberty, not going and watching a football game and getting drunk. We have to understand it's fun to be involved. It's fun to be informed. It's certainly not fun to be a slave and to live in a country that has a censored Internet that's run by the Pentagon, where they make all the different IT professionals get federally certified and uh, agree to spy on people for the government and to put government Trojan horse hardware into all of the ISPs. I'm talking about the little ISPs. Just a few weeks ago, we saw the CIA director come out and say, hey, we are spying on everybody through their appliances Ha, 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 when you buy a cell phone or a new washer or dryer, it's got tech built into it that the uh, smart meters dial into and we listen to you. You know, the Fourth Amendment ain't what it used to be, he laughed, at a NQTEL CIA public meeting where they steer money into the industry uh, to fund all of this. They're trying to just bring censorship out in the open and admitting it's an end to the Fourth Amendment and privacy, admitting it's an end to due process, admitting they'll just shut your site down or take it over if they want or spy on you or have the Pentagon attack your site if they don't agree with your information. In closing, we've seen people like Senator Lieberman and others say, if somebody's criticizing the war, shut down their website. He has said he wants to be able to send an email to YouTube and have people's videos taken down. That's actually happened to us before when we show videos exposing war crimes. So this is happening. Jay Rockefeller a few years ago said we would have been better off never inventing the Internet. He's one of the top senators who's trying to push all this right now. The system is desperate. At last year's Bilderberg, who was there? The head of Google, all the tech people. We predicted all this was coming because our moles inside said they want to clamp down on the web. It's here. It's happening. But public pressure is so huge that even Google on the surface has to act like they're against what's happening. So let's come together again. Let's get the storm of awakening happening. Uh, this breakdown, uh, CISPA, Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, and it goes over it. CISPA, Bill Tex, basic definitions, got all the graphics. Uh, take part in resisting this electronic Berlin wall the system is trying to drop down 
over our digital freedom to communicate in the online marketplace that is the town square. It is the modern town square. Here's the key. The only big group publicly supporting this is Facebook, who's called their users dumb effers and, and, and makes jokes. <laughs> users of Facebook trust us. What a bunch of idiots. Ha, ha, ha. That's the arrogant attitude of this scum. Let's show them that we're awake to what they're doing. Let's go into Facebook especially. And, and this video and the bill and the information out there and get it out to everyone. I take you back to InfoWars Nightly News and Aaron Dykes. And so we've got all this government corruption, all this targeting of Americans, and it goes on and on. If they don't kill actual people, they kill their animals or they destroy their property. And we see that again in this case, where Michigan unleashes armed raids on small pig farmers and forces farmers to shoot their own pigs. And it's all based on this invasive species order because you've got so many wild pigs across the country. And here in Michigan, the Department of Natural Resources have in at least two counties in Calcasa County and Sheboygan County gone after farmers for raising certain breeds of pigs that they're raising humanely independently on small farms meanwhile no one ever pays attention to the conditions at factory farms run by huge corporations and so what they did was they got these farmers forced them to kill each individual pig old young doesn't matter and it's all in the name of saving the earth once again this is agenda 21 and they're just destroying the entire livelihood of these farmers economically they're killing the stock uh, they undoubtedly depend on part of it for food as well and for what justification it's totally bunk policy uh, that story goes on it's up at natural news and at infowars by mike adams and he's calling for people to do an armed arrest of the officials from the natural resources because these departments are totally out of control. They don't even necessarily go in with good justification, and then people, animals, property must die or be destroyed. It's just crazy. We had another case here in Austin. Uh, of course, last week, the officer killed a lot of duty paid to him, a lot of respect and honor. Uh, yet this week, a cop shows up to the wrong house and kills a man's dog because he's responding to a domestic dispute that's not even going on at that property. Michael Paxton said his dog, Cisco, came in from the backyard where they were playing Frisbee. Uh, as the officer approached him, held a gun up to him and asked him to explain himself. Before he could, the dog comes out, starts barking, and Paxton ex tries to explain to the officer the dog is no threat, barks as any dog would at a stranger stranger being on the property, but instead the officer kills the dog dead for no good reason. And we've got that article up. It was also covered by KXAN today, but he's got a Facebook account out about the untimely, unjust death for Cisco, calling for justice there. That's where we originally got the report where he had written up his account of what had happened. And again, the police didn't even bother to check the address match, the one they'd been given in the phone call asking for a response. Instead, he just shows up and kills a dog. It's tragic the way these things happen. And, of course, it's reminiscent in many ways of the Andrew Wordis case that we've been covering all week long. We sent reporters, of course, to Roswell, Georgia, to find out why a man simply raising backyard chickens who had been in dispute with the city for years over Agenda 21 sustainable development policies was shot dead and why when our reporters went to Georgia where they refused entry even into City Hall uh, questions weren't to be answered on and on we have that report now filed by Darren McBreen and Marcos Morales let's go to it I'm not recording you. okay All I have right. no reason to record you All right. so in order to talk to them do we have to write something first or i don't understand we're with klbj and uh, uh free speech systems give in Austin, me Texas. give me a card show me your credentials and i'll run it up uh, for you that 22 sierra 2. Really? at 254 is here claim they're with the news media reluctant to show me any id no no no, not reluctant he's going to get it not resistant. Okay. i said reluctant not reluctant i said I reluctant and i said okay, and i'm correcting you because no you're not correcting me sir i'm correcting you I'm correcting the situation you take turn the camera off okay 
I have no legal obligation to do so. I'm documenting this case in particular, public servants in public, performing a public service. So, yeah, yeah. Watch him over there. You're the one carrying the camera. I'm just the cameraman. Just need to see your ID, sir. My identification? Yes. What on what basis? I, I'm not infringing on any, any private property. You're bringing right a camera onto the property. You do not know who you are. I need your ID, please. For On what basis, though? Sir, if you need my press pass to show that we're press, this guy is the press. Don't and you, I'm uh, go stand in front of the Jeep, please. I want to be over here where I can talk to you. All right. One, two, three. Now, we're compliant. On public yeah, property. There was nobody in there in City Hall, and I said, well, and he said, but there's, you know, there's a uh, a spokesperson, Marcos, that you talk to? Yeah, So I said, well, I said, well, let me go talk to her, and I'll just ask her a few questions. Mm -hmm. And then this gentleman. Yeah, he just, he just went up to talk with Julie Bregville. I told you to quit filming yeah, this Yes, sir, but you're a public servant on public property in a public place, and we are media. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Um, we're not trying to be resistant. We're not trying to be... I understand. We're just doing our job that we've been sent on here to do. No, sir, no, sir. You, you asked for ID. press pass. I had to come back and this get is... it. You asked me for a press pass, not ID. And we we uh, aren't breaking any laws. So I didn't say you were breaking laws. I yes, said we have policies you said it was regarding cameras. Tape, yeah. Yeah, we don't allow it without a permit. I don't know that you were with the press. I told him to turn his camera off. But refused. the credentials are there. Right. Those are the here's, press credentials. Here's, what, here's what I can tell you to do. Okay. What I would do is contact you with Brett, dude. And that's the person he talked to? I have no idea who you talked to. Yes, the, uh, Man, I just tried to Burnett walk in lady, the hall. I didn't know it would be uh, create sorry, such a fuss. Burnett lady, short hair. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're here. We're here to right. figure all these facts out. Well, if what you would have said that to begin what with, city then number? I could have referred you to the right place. But I believe you talked with Julie, and she sent okay. you away. She didn't send me away. She didn't tell me to leave. She okay. didn't express any interest in me not. You, uh, you did, did you not ask her if the city council was here? That's exactly. And what, what I asked. did she say? She said they're part time. They're not here. So I said, okay, let me go out and in my. I didn't tell her where I was going. She didn't tell me to leave. In my head, I decided I'm going to go out and confer with my reporter to yes. figure out the next move. Okay. And in doing so, we decided we should go back in there and ask her if she wouldn't mind us shooting some footage. You know, another thing I'm curious about, like you said, we have to be authorized media, but why wouldn't a person with a video camera, like I'm, I'm from Austin, Texas, we have a huge city hall, and we are we could walk in with cameras and and just hey, how you doing, sir, and talk to people up the stairs inside the building. So imagine our surprise when we're just blocked right away. What are you doing with those cameras? It's just kind of odd to me. Yeah, but can't answer that, sir. Okay, and I'll be honest with you. All right. Are we allowed to videotape the, the building, for example, for like a B-roll or something? I mean, is this is this privately owned property? Yeah, I would check with in, Julie. Yeah, in Georgia, in Georgia, really, there's no publicly owned property.